call the Board of Trustees regular meeting Monday, January 5th at 7.30 to order. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Adoption of agenda. Any additions or deletions? I have two under my report. Um, as it states, we'll have Karen do the audit. And under letter D, board of review training, also like the appointment of alternate because of the uh, training approval. We might as well take care of that at the same time. And any other deletion, additions or deletions, please? Fire Department report. Chief. Good evening, everybody. Just a couple items. More for both. They're all covered in my written report. It's more for the residents. A uh, couple items. Uh, Fire Department was notified last month uh, from the state of Michigan that we received a grant through the DNR, a little over $1,600. It's a smaller grant, but it'll pay for a uh, new fire hose as well as um, some additional fire gloves for the department. So that was a uh, we haven't received the DNR grant in about seven years, so that was that was a real nice, uh, nice letter to receive. Second, I did submit last month also a 22-page grant to the federal government grant request, requesting $250,000 uh, for the replacement of uh, Rescue 2, which is now 20 years old. And uh, all we can do is hope, and you know, we won't know for several months where we're at, but uh, December 5th was the was the deadline. And the final thing I have is that uh, the Firefighters Association held our annual Shop at the Hero program uh, last month before Christmas and with the help with uh, a lot of volunteers, a lot of support from uh, community businesses as well as Pine Tree Acres and help with a lot of people. Uh, we were able to take 105 uh, underprivileged children on a $100 shopping spree at, uh, at the local buyer. So it was a very successful night for us. The rest of everything else is covered in my written report that I request that you receive the file. If there are, if there are any questions? I just noticed there's a, quite a few calls in Station 2 lately. Yes, it has been a busy month at the North End. It really has. So. In fact, all over in 
since we started the new year, it's been real busy. So we were over at Ivor Township Saturday night for four and a half hours on a structure fire with the crew. So. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Chief. You must report, Troy. Good evening. Happy New Year. Um, the, uh, just want to make a quick announcement. I, I did send out a uh, report to the board late today after we were finished compiling the December numbers. It should be on your email. Don't know if you had a chance to review it before the meeting, but if not, certainly as always, just give me a call uh, after you receive that or have had a chance to review it. <clears throat> just like to remind everybody, we have a blood drive tomorrow evening or tomorrow afternoon in the evening from 3 to 9 p.m. at the Richmond Township Hall at school section at M19. Uh, just uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, for the uh, folks in the audience tonight, uh, the EMS took delivery on December 23rd of our uh, new ambulance. Uh, the new uh, advanced life support vehicle uh, was built in Jefferson, North Carolina uh, by American Emergency Vehicles at a cost of $146,000. So uh, that vehicle was uh, placed in service about uh, just about 24 hours after we received it. We were able to do everything in-house to the vehicle as far as switching over equipment, including with um, having uh, Rob Miller on staff, who's real familiar with the radio equipment, installing all the radios and computers. And he, like I say, he completed that in about 24 hours with about a seven hour sleep break uh, in there to get the vehicle uh, operating and, and in service. When we're replacing a vehicle, it's a little different than getting one new because during the process of, of your changeover, you have an ambulance off service. So the importance of getting it done quickly is, is, uh, is, uh, is important so we have enough vehicles in the fleet to handle the call volume. Um, the only other item I'd like to mention while I have the podium is just uh, the EMS um, is assisting the Richmond Lions in taking over their um, hospital equipment supply for wheelchairs, walkers, things like that that people donate. For years, uh, they, and, and, and by the way, our local fire department uh, has uh, handled having these uh, items available for, uh, for folks in the community who might need them, whose insurance doesn't pay for them. Like I said, we're going to be working with the Richmond Lions to, to assist them with their supply. Uh, some of the members have <clears throat> gotten a little older and, and don't have the interest in, uh, in maintaining and keeping up the equipment. So we're going to, we're going to be doing that uh, at the EMS uh, on their behalf. But one of the things we learned in taking this project on is there was some uh, equipment that really had no value any longer. And, and um, so we've gone through that equipment at this point, and I contacted uh, just uh, before the holidays, uh, Kathy Klein from Waste Management and said, you know, we're going to have some equipment that we need just a place to dispose of. Uh, and uh, Pine Tree Acres kind of came right to the table, as they often do uh, in this community, and said, hey, bring it, bring it down. We'll get rid of it for you, and there won't be any charge uh, to the EMS or the Lions Club for that. So while they're here, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to them for, uh, for that uh, contribution. With that, I think that's all I have for report. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. White. Thank you. Appreciate it. DPW report. Sir. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I've distributed uh, my report for the month. Uh, I ask that you receive a file. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions.
we're not working for the last three, but Jeanette has hard copies. Um, just in case you didn't get a chance to look at your email, um, nothing changed from the last month, just minor updates. Uh, just one thing I want to bring up to the board, I was talking to uh, uh, Trustee Boyd earlier about, and, and uh, Clerk Keith about the recreation passport grant that is available for the DNR. I believe there is a 60 grant maximum that we can apply for for the uh, path uh, rehab. And um, I was just reading Dave's email. Uh, the components that he used for the last grant could be recycled for this one. So my recommendation would have Dave work on it and submit for the uh, passport recreation grant this year. I believe the deadline is April, but we need to keep the project uh, scope within 60 grand. And we, we will be available to help them need it. Just a recommendation. Any other questions on the report? I will take, otherwise, uh, please receive the file. Now, on the other half of that, uh, we did apply, most of you know, for a grant for a path, uh, concession stand, bathrooms, and unfortunately, we didn't get it. And I believe the biggest reason was because we don't connect to any other paths that go anywhere else in the county. So that was the biggest thing they were looking for. So unfortunately, we didn't get that grant. So that's why we started about applying for this one to keep moving forward with that. Because there are improvements that need desperately to be made in the park, which is mainly the path. That's correct. Last year's uh, uh, grant application, the state was focusing on connecting these uh, trailways, and we don't have any connection anywhere. So they, we did not score high enough to get the grant. I believe the threshold was 320 something, and we came about 80 points lower. Up towards you a little bit. 
You're okay. Am I too quiet? Or that's that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So on page one, um, the only part of your audit that is ours is actually your opinion letter, and you had an unmodified opinion this year again, um, which is just a clean opinion. It just means that your statements are presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, and that's really what the state looks for, is an unmodified opinion. The next part in your audit is the management discussion and, and analysis, and that is required for to, to get an unmodified opinion, and it just gives the reader management views on the audit and the operations and things that have occurred during the year. The next section in your audit is entity-wide financial statements, and that's looking at the township um, basically like a business. It includes everything of the township, all your debt, all your assets, everything um, is included in that. But how townships normally and governments normally look at their financials is on a fund basis. So that's kind of what we'll go through is um, just your fund basis statements. So at June 30th, 2014, the general fund had assets of $2,108,260, liabilities of $72,245, some deferred inflows of resources of $11,396, for a total fund balance at June 30th of $2,024,619. That was a, a change from last year of $85,441, where you had revenues of $852,489 for the year and expenses of $937,930. The fund balance of your general fund was split up um, on page two into different categories. You had some non-spendable fund balance of 36,442, which the majority of that is just your prepaid expenses. Um, you have to basically separate those out because you've already spent that, it's paid, it's an asset, but you can't respend it again because you're gonna use it this next year. You also had a signed fund balance of $610,092 and unassigned fund balance of $1,378,085. Um, looking at your fund balance for the last few years, it has pretty much stayed pretty stable for the last few years, a little over $2 million. Um, you're, you also have special revenue funds. Um, you have road fund, fire fund, PTA revenue fund, liquor law enforcement and monitoring fee fund. Um, your road fund brought in $142,191 and spent $60,336. So your change in fund balance for that fund was $81,855. The fire fund brought in $483,595, spent $337,396, and had an increase in fund balance of $146,199. Your PTA revenue fund brought in a little over $2.3 million, spent almost $1.1 million for an increase of $1,279,935. Your liquor law enforcement uh, brought in about $3,500, spent $1,500 for a change of close to $2,000. And your monitoring fee fund brought in close to $10,000, spent $10,000 for a change a decrease of $175. And then looking at the fund balance for each of those funds, your fire fund had 774,600, or sorry, your road fund had $774,686. Your fire fund had $1,816,655. Your PTA revenue fund had $9,246,396. And your liquor law enforcement and monitoring fee had $30,139 and $47,819, respectively. You also have a debt service fund, your Chapter 20 drain fund, that brought in $38 of revenue and spent $2,588. So that ending fund balance for that was $30,616. Looking at page three, um, your water 
supply and sewage disposal system fund. You had operating revenues in that fund of 1,560,443. Operating expenses excluding depreciation of 772,928. And then your depreciation expense was $778,424. So you had an operating income in the fund of $9,091. You also had some non-operating revenues this year of, well, the net of revenues and expenses of 456,808. So your increase in your net position in your water and sewer fund was $465,899. Looking down at our number two, um, it really just kind of shows like what your cash results are for that fund, um, not totally counting all your payables, receivable changes there, but your operating income was $9,000. We're adding back depreciation on, in, of that number because it's really a non-cash transaction there of $778,000. So operations brought in $787,515. You earned a little bit of interest of close to $8,300. And then with your debt that you have in that fund, um, you had principal payments of $952,000, interest expense of $1,175,000, and then there was some forgiveness of interest uh, from the federal government of $186,000. You also paid for some capital um, improvements of $9,000, and you brought in some tap-in fees of close to $1.5 million. So your net increase in cash in that fund was $292,000 for the year ending June 30th, 2014. Going down to that number three there, your net working capital for that fund at June 30th, um, you did have a positive net working capital of $1.1 million. There are also some other reports that are included in those packets up there. Um, the independent auditor's report on internal control and the audit communication letter, which we had gone over with management um, previously. On page four, um, it just shows the breakdown of your revenues in your general fund. And you're really fairly consistent. Um, looking at this year and last year, um, you had $35,000, or 35% 35 of your revenues were brought in from taxes, and 46% were brought in by federal and state revenues, which is really the state um, shared revenues. Last year it was 45%, so you're, you've been fairly consistent the last couple of years. Page five is the breakdown of expenses by function, and the biggest portion of your general fund um, expenses are paid for general government. Um, there's 86% was this, or at the year end, June 30th, 2014, and 83% in the previous year. So again, those expenses are fairly consistent as well. On page six, um, it's just a graph showing um, really the breakdown of the balance of what the fund balance is of your general fund. And as you can see, it is fairly consistent, a little over 2.25 million way back in 2010, and just over two million at the end of this year. If anybody has any questions? Any questions for Karen? So we 
yet. She wanted to do this. Um, if you look at the revised. I have a that we need to approve is $196,689.24. And you do have that one, I just... So that's the one I have. Does everybody have that one? I was using that to balance. So. Then you will also have another one that says revised to be approved at the January meeting. This was because the meeting was um, so early in the month and there was quite a few after the fair. And so I wanted um, the rest of them to be sh approved in the new amount for the um, minute purposes. That's what the auditors look at. And the total of that one, if you can find that one, is $443,151.95. And
what they would give us for labor, and there's no more getting parts for our machine. They don't make them. I, and sorry to interrupt, but I guess our biggest concern is if that one goes down, yeah, without one, we'd have to get a rental come in, or they that would come in. And then we'd have to purchase one or, or rent one, like right away, because that is our fax machine, that is our main scanner. You know, we do everything with that one. We have two other copy machines in the building, but they are just copy machines, and they don't work all that great. It's the scanning and the fax capability Correct. that we be without, which we cannot be without. Correct. And, and that's one of the concerns we have now too, that we should almost consider a backup. Uh, type system in case that does go down, so we're not without it. I mean, you have a fax machine in your office, the building department, when we did have an issue where we couldn't fax, um, they would be using the one in your office and it would work. But you said that there's also one in the building department? Two fax no, machines? it's in Ron's office, the portable fax machine. And that's probably 50 years old? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite old. Yeah, it's, it's in rough shape, let me tell you. It's not a new unit by any means. Uh, I mean, if I had to guess, I'd probably say it's 20 years old. I couldn't answer that. It was in the building department before. Yeah, it's just a small, like, foreign one or something. Desktop. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, these copy, what we have right now is a 50 page per minute, and all the companies that we talked to said that that is way too much for our building. We don't have that much demand for copying. Um, so we went, we got 35 per minute, we did 40 per minute, we did 45 per minute, um, just to get different pricing. We did black versus color. Color has come way down. Um, scanning. Based on your information, what's your recommendation at this time? Well, all these quotes are good for at least another month. Um, Veronica and I have discussed, we thought we'd like to wait another month and see how this machine is going, how it's working, now that we're able to track how many copies we're making. Before we had no idea how to do that, and now we can. Um, You'll have a better understanding of what we actually need then at that point. Right. If more of our, every desk, every, every office has a printer that uses those ink jets or laser. Though, when you print to that, you use a lot of ink, and especially if you're doing color. But even the black and white is using a lot more ink than if you, if you are working on your computer and you send it to the copy machine, you're saving like 50% in ink alone. So if we can get in the habit to print to that, because I've been doing it a lot in the last couple of weeks, and by the time I hit print, and then go all the way down there and get it, it's already done. And you get up and exercise at the same time. <laughs> so, you know, this is a nice feature to do if you're doing more than like five pages. If you're doing just one or two, it's not that right. big of a deal. If you're doing, you know, a booklet or more than a few, it's, it's any type of volume, but you have the cost to send it to the main. Yeah, yeah. Did, did we by any chance, and this just popped in my head, ask them about buying the old machine? Did they do that? Um, there was, I'm going back to the beginning of December. There's one company that gives us $500 for taking the machine that we have. Um, trying to remember. It's pretty good for something that's outdated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I'm sorry, I can't remember what the other two do. Well, actually, like One the doesn't. idea of waiting so that, because I didn't see this until I sat down here. So I like the idea of waiting so we can go over these. So I right. like the idea of table until next month. Since we do have that one working mm -hmm. quite well right now, mm -hmm. that's what I heard earlier today, too. Mm -hmm. I, th I think we definitely need to absorb this, but also take into consideration we need a backup in case something goes wrong. Um, and maybe it is just having another one, but updating that machine also to the smaller one. Right, and it's and a possibility to take, a look to take at it. It's in my office. It's, uh, to take the one, our main one that we're using now, and move it in front of, you know, Carol and Jody's office where that other one is. It's the same, but yet it doesn't work very good. And getting rid of that one. And keep this one. And keep this one. It's a good idea. So then we have a really good one as our backup. Yeah, just 
so they were not down if we had to reconnect well, something. The whole reason we started looking into this is that the panel itself was going out, and we already know that's going to be a very expensive fix. Mm -hmm. So if it goes out, as our main one right now, you mean? Well, if it was kept. As our backup? Yeah. Okay, well, it would be our backup. If it goes out, then... Get another backup. Yeah. <laughs> Basically just run it into the ground till that happens and then get a backup. And that's what we're doing to the one that's outside of our office. It's on its yes. last... Yes. I'm going to say toe because it only copies one sheet at a time now. But I think what Jody's thinking ahead is if we move that one over there, you use it for a couple months, it blows. You could have got $500 for it before. Well, I'm just thinking if it doesn't so, work. Yeah. You know, so. that one has a scanning capability, but um, I don't know if that could still happen over there. Now those type of machines, like that big one, um, they have actual ink cartridges, or how how is the ink? It's toner. It's toner. You just pour it. Oh, okay. Um, they all scan in color. So if I was to scan um, a colored document like this and send it by email or faxing it, they would get it in color. Right now, they would get it in black and white. And they all do that. So that's really nice an option. Yeah, because I was just thinking, I've got a, a brother printer at home. I mean, it, it's a decent machine for the price, but I don't like the idea of the cartridges. If one is low, it won't work at all. You know, if your black is low, it won't print anything. If the, the red is low, it won't print anything. So it's, you know, something like that. I didn't know how those worked if you just poured. Yeah, it's totally different. Yeah. yeah. We have our, the big printer that's colored. Just like that. Because you have to use my cartridges. Yeah. Thanks, Janet. All the prices include um, to purchase or to be on a lease, and they've got, you know, a couple different months of options there. I'll make a motion to table the uh, copier until we get a more accurate count of usage next month. Support. Motion by Trustee Boyd, supported by Clerk Keith. Are there questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. Reschedule policy manual workshop. Steve and I were actually talking about this. Um, there's been a few things that have come up that have said we need to have that in our policy manual on one of them. Yeah, I have some things in there that 
I did talk to Stephen about we didn't go over there each one. I agree to the change as it goes right. along, but we already know there's a change existing so right but now. These are new issues that we know need to be in there, so. What's everybody's wishes? No, my wish was done. <laughs> You're going to need, need an attorney job, you're going to need another month. I know. Well, uh, as Clerk Keith indicated, if the board wants to set a date for a special meeting, whether it's uh, toward the end of this month or sometime during February. The end of this month is shot, so I think we should just revisit it at the next board meeting myself. That would be my recommendation. You're saying wait till the next well, we're, February to make End of the month is not an option. Everybody will be gone. Oh, you'll be gone. Okay, I'll be gone. No one else is gone? No. Okay, I'll be gone. Yeah. I will be gone as well. You'll be during three days of the week. Yes. So we're looking at February. Yes, if you'd like to set a date in February so it doesn't have to return on the agenda, that could certainly take place. For me, it's easier to wait. So and that's and for sure. I don't have my schedule okay. for that, but it's up to you guys if you well, want. Our meeting's the second day, yeah. anyways. Yeah. Our second, so okay. it really doesn't matter. Make a motion that we table the rescheduling of the policy manual workshop. Support. Motion by Clerk Key, supported by Trustee Churchy. Is there questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. New business. DPW lawnmower repair request. <clears throat> I had submitted a letter to the board um, before we left for holiday, um, basically stating that our one of our oldest lawnmowers, so please a little bit, um, one of the X marks is uh, it's just getting tired. Uh, it's, the last couple of years it's been using a lot, a lot of oil. This past year it was really bad. We had to keep adding oil every week. Um, and now it's starting to cause a power problem. Uh, this mower is 15 years old. It was the first one that we ever purchased. Uh, it's been a very good unit to us. Um, we've had to do minor maintenance and parts replacement to it in that 15 years. Doing a little research, um, a new mower to replace what we currently have is still around eight thousand dollars at the government bid price. Uh, we can replace that mower complete with a brand new motor for twenty three hundred. Uh, my recommendation is, since the rest of the mower is in such good shape, that we just replace the motor, the motor on this mower, to get a few more years out of it. Spending twenty three versus the eight, correct. I see no reason why we can't get at least another five to six years out of this unit. Oh, uh, this is six to seven. Oh, <laughs> no. I'm to, uh, I, 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 you know, I'm all part of it. I mean, um, 15 years on a commercial mower for how much uh, grass we're cutting with that? I mean, it gets used. How's our warranty with that versus the new? The, I believe the new motor comes with a two-year warranty. Uh, that's right from the manufacturer. Um, I think a new motor, a new mower complete. I don't even think you get two years. I think you only get a year. Um, Last year I got one year. Yeah. And a zero type. Yep. And that that would we would only be uh, uh, basically the only cost would be for the motor itself. We would do all the change out um, in house at the shop. Just like to remind everyone that this is not coming, this wouldn't come out of the DPW funds. This would come out of the general fund. So with that said, I make a motion that we approve the replace replacement engine at a cost of $2,300, and that is coming from the general fund. Motion by Clerk Keith, supported by Treasurer Attenbacher. Other questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Seems kind of strange to be 
talk about grass cutting this yeah. time of year. I think that's pretty good to get 15 years out of that, oh, yeah. that first bunch of cutting that's done. But next one, letter B, DPW watershed membership request. Uh, we were sent uh, a letter from the Clinton River Watershed Council uh, for our 2015 membership dues. Um, we've been a part of this council uh, for a number of years. Um, they have a lot of different activities that they do in and, in and about the region uh, to enhance water quality. Um, You know, years ago, one of the reasons we joined this council was because the EPA implemented a watershed uh, plan. Each community had to develop one. Um, we did that, we started on that process. After a couple, three years, I believe it was, uh, we became exempt from it. But we did continue because it did affect our area and region belonging to this council. Uh, I would recommend that we continue supporting this because it does uh, benefit our area. And then of course, if things ever do change, where we have to be permitted again for the watershed, we're still up to date uh, with all the activities and uh, we can kind of pick up where we left off. Now this, I know this was listed on the agenda as DPW watershed. Actually, this is another township uh, because it has to do with the outfalls of the properties, all the different properties. It has really nothing to do with the water system. I mean, 
I imagine you're probably looking somewhere around 102 to 100 quarter a night. It's probably a safe estimate. Yeah. It's so it's if you want to have that option available based on weather conditions. Yeah, but is he going to be able to get a room at the last minute if, you know? Okay, but is this a full day or are they both two half days? No, they're really only half days. I mean, we're usually done by noon, one o'clock. And, uh, yeah, middle of February, there's not a whole lot going on at downtown Lansing. This says lunch is at 11.30 both days, so. Yeah, yeah um, we usually don't eat the lunch there. Yeah. <laughs> we can be on, on the road on the way back here by, by noon. It's it smells good. I'll tell you that. It's been the same spot. Yeah. So. No, usually we uh, uh, because they because they have such a large uh, large group of people, they stage. You know, so okay. it, it could be you know Wes could be in a totally different room than I am um, during the lectures. You'll get the same the same uh, speakers. But they might be in a totally different room. His lunch may be different time than mine, and I I, I tried to eat it the first year, and it, we usually just grab something on the road. To be honest with you. Okay, I'm going to make a motion that we approve Cam and Wes for three hundred and eighty dollars, one hundred ninety for each of them for the two day workshop in Lansing and remember to bring receipts from your lunch and make your lunch. Thank you. Support. Motion by Treasurer Anbacher, supported by Clerk Keith. Another discussion? I'd just like to uh, say that if we get like an ice storm, um, 69, you don't mm -hmm. want to be on 69, that's how where I told my Jeep when it was three weeks old when I was going to Lansing. If you're there and you get a massive ice storm, you and Wes find a room. It's, it, it's not I, worth driving 69. It, it really is not. So, um, so just, yeah. If, if push comes to shove, we'll make arrangements that fits the situation. We've got enough uh, landscape companies around here, and I know a couple of guys with, with trucks We'll take care of the snow around here if we have to, but for your safety, sure. if we get get a, a, a ice storm, know that I feel you should be able to stay. Well, just to, we also have Patrick as an option too, right? If we had to call him some other. Yeah, if we get, I mean, if we get the bind, um, he calls me. <laughs> there we go. Or you know. Like I said, in probably the last 10 years, um, we've only had to take care of lots twice before we left. Well, there was only one year where uh, the roads were were kind of bad, but by the time we were done and on our way home, you know, it was pretty much clear. So, you know, it, we're just going to read the situation, see what happens, and we'll make the call. I have access to two plow trucks, so if we have to, we're getting an emergency cover. Okay. I'd rather see you home safe and sound. Any other discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Letter D, Board of Review Training and Appointment of Alternate.
know that we're going to be sending employees there to be trained, but they just don't know the exact number of how many. Yep. And they said we can bring in the check by the end of the week. So, person that I uh, did apply is Marnie Ickes. Um, does have real estate knowledge um, and property value knowledge. The other gentleman we appointed the last time too had the same thing and he's worked out very well. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So I'd like to appoint her as an alternate if the board so pleases. We were trying to get someone from the northern part of the community, um, but nobody's been interested. That's where this, is, this person's from, like I say, I have the holidays and everything. two alternates to the board of review and we still needed one more for the um yeah. zone board of appeals so we can still go out and try to get a, the other you know other people too that would like to yeah that still that 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 it's very far is it at the north border of the township so <laughs> that would cover the north Goes to stuff, and 
he gets, it's not all from us. Some of his training gets paid for from the other communities that he uses. And I actually talked to um, the code enforcement officer about the same thing because he is now working for another community. And I said, you know, we're, we're paying for this this time, but next time it really should be a joint venture. It's not something that we should be paying for. And they're contracted here, and we are not the only community that she works in. Well, she notified me today to put her name down on here, so I'm just giving it all to you. Right. I agree with Chris, so just the actual members of the Board of Review should attend. The Green Secretary has taken notes before this, and it's not, this training is how to deal with the Board of Review, it's not how to take notes. And I've asked questions about taking notes at the last class that I went to about three years ago, four years ago. County Department of Roads General Road Maintenance Agreement.
make a motion that we approve the use of KCI for the 2015 assessment change notices at a cost of $475.64 and then estimated postage. Support. Motion by Clerk Keith, supported by Treasurer Attenbacher. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Letter F. Macomb County Department of Roads General Road Maintenance Agreement. Attorney Job, you had a review on this, I believe, correct? Yes, I did. If I may, Mr. Supervisor, I provided. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, I provided a draft resolution for uh, Township Board to consider in this regard. The resolution uh, is uh, uh, basically along the lines of the form that was provided by the county for these purposes, and it empowers uh, the DPW director or supervisor to uh, sign any applications that are needed for permits to do work in the right of way for things uh, such as sewer taps and whatnot that take place in the right way. It's a blanket application so that each time um, the administration doesn't have to come back to the board or wait for a board meeting in order to do anything from emergencies to routine maintenance and activities in the county right of way. It does include an indemnification and hold harmless sentence in paragraph two, uh, which uh, uh, to me seems reasonable. Uh, the uh, resolution also requires the township to notify the county of contractors that are authorized to do work on behalf of the township. Usually that's as part of the per permitting process. Do you see any problem with us signing this? I do. Your recommendation is to sign? That is correct. Thank you. Yes. And I'm pretty sure this would be 2016-1. Oh, the resolution number? I. Not certain of that, but I don't know. Oh, careful. I would say 2015. Oh, did I say 16? Oh, 15. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah. Yes, okay, 2015-1. I make a motion that we approve the blanket permit for general road maintenance uh, with the Macomb County Department of Roads Resolution 2015-1. Support. Motion by Clerk Keith, supported by Trustee Boyd. Any other discussion? Just change the change 14 to 15 too in the extra resolution. Yeah. Other question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Reschedule CDBG grant fund public hearing. Destroy. Mr. Supervisor, following your last meeting, um, I attended on behalf of the township uh, the, I guess, every three-year meeting now with uh, the uh, community service agency that now oversees the CDBG funds for Lennox Township um, on behalf of the community. At that meeting, we discussed uh, the use of CDBG funds, and the, the, C, the CDBG program is um, undergone a bit of a transition with a new director uh, in that role. And uh, the new director seems to have reinterpreted some of the rules with regards to the use of those funds, uh, probably making them significantly stricter than they've been in years past with regards to what you can use them for. And as you know, in years past, there was only a very limited number of things uh, we could uh, use the dollars for. Um, Generally speaking, we have agreement that they will allow us to use your $90,000 in funds to complete the payoff of the EMS building on Gratiot Avenue. Uh, that uh, will cost about $38,000 to, to finish that payoff. They'll also let you use the funds, 15% of them, maybe just a, a little bit more than that, uh, but usually 15% is about the target number, to offset the cost for three years of your senior program. So that's about $15,000. Give or take that you can use for that. After that, programs that don't um, benefit 100% the uh, 
those target focus kind of groups for the use of CDBG funds, uh, we're finding that the county is saying no to. And so uh, we had proposed a project uh, where the, uh, some of the remaining funds might have been used for the planning and architecture of a potential new uh, headquarters for the EMS and storage facility for our community transit buses. And the, the response we received, and I actually have a written response from her that I can share with the uh, board, was that because a non-handicapped person can ride our buses, and SMART requires that, by the way, because those are public transit funds, we can't use any CDBG funds for that project. We had suggested that maybe we could use a portion of the CDBG funds for the for the bus garage, i.e. headquarters, and then put in a portion of our own money, and we're told no. And I have, like I said, I have a letter that specifically says no <laughs> in it. So um, we've bounced a few other ideas off them to which we haven't had much greater success at this point in time. I do have, uh, without getting into the weeds, I do have a couple other suggestions uh, for the board. Uh, and. I uh, have asked uh, to meet with uh, both uh, Mr. Tromley and, uh, and uh, Clerk Keith during our regular EMS committee meeting scheduled for January 15th to discuss some of those ideas. Uh, I'm going to also, hopefully before that meeting, get a response from the county as to whether or not any of those ideas that the township could use those monies for. I'm not talking about using the e e I don't think there's anything that the EMS could do that could qualify at this point. So these would be all ideas that we'd be able to use that money for, that the township can use that money for, um, maybe out in the park or something of that nature, uh, uh, to use that basically remaining, uh, you know, $38,000 or so in funds, in funds that you'll have. I'll try to have an answer for those ideas that I have at that meeting. I'll suggest those uh, to you and see if we get an idea of, of what direction you'd like to go forward uh, in at your, at your public hearing. As you know, the public hearing had been scheduled for tonight, but I, I think uh, the, we met on a Monday. On a Tuesday, I attended that uh, meeting with the county, and on Tuesday afternoon, I was here in the office saying to both uh, you know, uh, Jody and Ron, we need to cancel the public hearing because uh, we don't have a project uh, at this point in time uh, you know, that qualifies, and, and we're gonna need some time to do that. Then with the holidays, both here at the township and at the county level, uh, there's been some delay in getting um, responses back. So I think putting it off was, was a good decision. I think we can, I, I believe, uh, as, as much as I painted some doom and gloom in the picture, I believe we can find a project that, that we can do in Lennox Township and that we will not have to give that money back. And that is my absolute intent, uh, is, is to find that niche project. But what I'm, what I'm suggesting to the board tonight is that you fully and thoroughly understand that the project focus and scope is going to be incredibly narrow. Don't, don't, don't put on the, this idea that you have all these grand ideas about what you can spend this grant money on, but <coughs> frankly, you are not going to be able to do it. How long can we actually put off the public hearing? What's that? How long? How long can we put off? The well, they, they would like to have the they would it. like to have um, the answers back by the the very first part of March for this. So we really have to have the public hearing at your February meeting, or you could schedule a special meeting to just have a public hearing on CDBG funds. You know, sometime later in February, if that became necessary. We did ask the question about they're always saying they want the uh, certified minutes by, I think it's the 2nd of March deadline. I, I, I called and spoke with Carrie Fortune uh, down at the, um, at, at the CDBG office, and uh, she said, uh, with the understanding of kind of the new, more stringent rules and, and communities having to go back and kind of reassess, that if they don't have a approved set of minutes on March the 2nd, a draft set of minutes would be acceptable because you, you might have to, you know, not be able to approve a set of minutes to your March meeting, if you will. So, so that, that's about the only wiggle room they, they, all, they afforded us at this point. I was hoping that maybe we could postpone it until the March meeting so that we could 
have our meeting with you on the 15th and be able to... Certainly. Why don't we meet on the 15th, discuss some of those ideas, and then after that, I can certainly call uh, you know, down there again and say the board would really like to put this off till March and, and you know, if that's, the, if that's kind of the direction we'd like to go. I mean, at this point, all they can do is say no. Correct. And, and if they do, I guess the question would be, would, if, if we decided that on the 15th and I talked to them on the 16th, does that, I don't know what the publication deadlines are for your public hearing. You know, do you have to have two weeks? Do you have, I, I'm not sure the answer to that. So I don't know if you want to put it on the February meeting agenda at this point. Uh, I guess I would defer that to you, not knowing what the um, what the notice requirements are. So if you schedule it tonight, then we know we can have it on the at, at the next regular meeting. And I don't know if we couldn't put it on tonight, schedule it, and if we really get in that bind, cancel it again. If we sure. And then that I would maybe defer to Mr. Chop to, to let us know if we could you know if we could do that. Well, at least we have a date scheduled. Then. And what he said, once it's published, then we have to go through with it. Until then, we can keep, you know, go ahead. One exception to that is if you publish it, and uh, before the meeting there's time to get a subsequent publish, uh, publishing of a cancellation of the public hearing. So, but under the circumstances we had, it wasn't even published yet, so we didn't even write to that. But here, if we publish, and as long as there's enough time to get a second publication canceling it, if that becomes necessary, then you don't have to hold the public hearing. But it sounds like there might not be. It's, it's going to be I real tight. On the issue. It's yeah. going to be real, real tight. Yeah, it's is, it is the problem. So, and and uh, the, the county seems to be very busy right now. There's only two people in that office, and with the significant changes they've made, I think they are way behind. So part of our problem is getting answers from them right now. Um, I've had situations where I've phoned and emailed and we get an answer, but it's a couple of weeks after I have to ask, ask the question. That's, that's part of the other problem we're running into right now. There. And I just read an article in the paper, didn't like New Haven use all their funds for park improvements? Those, those were, I, I, I don't want to speak for, for New Haven, but I think some of those were older funds. It's, it's kind of like our station number three, because they had, that project was already going on. Uh, you know, they have made some allowance or, or given some consideration uh, for, those, for those issues to, to finish out projects, because the, part, the, the FUP project's been, you know, a number of years and, right. and, and going on. Basically, the, the projects coming under this new, more intense scrutiny are the new applications. Attorney Chapman. Mr. Supervisor, uh, may I ask a question? Sure. Please do. Uh, I'm not familiar with the uh, application materials and process that the county's established now and any new rules that they have. Have they indicated that, um, that the board is required to schedule the public hearing, or is it open to uh, some? As some communities do, uh, public hearings are scheduled by uh, uh, the supervisor or the clerk, as the case may be. Even special meetings in some instances. Oh, I see. Uh, so, does, is the board required to set the public hearing date? I don't believe so. I I'd want to look, but I don't. I don't know that there's anything that says the board has to set the date for the public hearing. I mean, I know the board has to have the public hearing. The, you know, the public hearing has to come before this body. Well, but who has the authority to set that date? I, I don't have an answer. What would be your recommendation, Attorney John? Uh, well, my recommendation is, uh, you know, provided we double check that, uh, that the uh, perhaps the board can indicate that it, it reschedules the public hearing for the uh, to be published for the first meeting in February, uh, or. Uh, for any uh, subsequent date, provided the rules allow a date to be determined by the supervisor and clerk. Covers it all. Yes. I can't imagine that would hurt as the form of a motion, and that way we at least have a date on the books and we can work with that, uh, you know, if, if we need to. Gives us the option. And it gives us the option. The only thing is for publication, we're 
if we're waiting until the meeting on the 15th, it's pushing it off close. So then the rules would be how how long does it work? Is that publication the time period that it needs to be published because we could do the Macomb Daily if we had to. That's that's my question. Is it specific how it has to be publicized? That there, I'm not sure. I, I would imagine that being that these involve federal <coughs> monies and whatnot, that there is a timing requirement and certain verbiage that has to be included. In I, I know there is verbiage in this as to timing. Um, I suspect there's something there, but uh, but I'm not certain if that's two weeks or uh, I don't think it's any more than two weeks of publications is required. So I'd have to look back at my notes on that. I mean, does it have to be specific to any publication? That's all. Okay. Uh, usually, uh, most public notification requirements are to a uh, publication that is published throughout the entire community, available through for everybody. In the so if you have a publication that only serves part of the community, that's not good enough. It has to be one that serves all. Yeah. So Home that's daily, nice. for example, definitely. The voice. The voice. Yeah. the voice is what we use, and then we use the, but we have the Macomb Daily as an alternate. You know, so why can't we set the, the uh, public hearings for the February meeting? Doesn't necessarily mean we're making a decision that day. And that, is true. that too is true, actually. Now that you say that, Karen, that's actually a great idea because there are communities, now that you say that, um, Ray, for instance, holds their public hearing, generally speaking, I'll just use them as an example because I've been there for theirs. They hold their public hearing and they actually don't make a decision until a subsequent meeting. They just hear, the, sure they just hear the project from the public. So we can we hold the public can. hearing right. and then set a special meeting if we really need to have you. And you don't have to select then from projects from your public hearing. In other words, you can, you, you can then, you, you have the public hearing so the public can speak, so the ideas can be brought forward, and then if none of the ideas are acceptable, you could still have a special board meeting a week or two later and, and select a project of your own choosing to move forward with. Attorney John, only question I would have in that regard is what if uh, word isn't received back from the county in time for publication for the February, uh, the first meeting in February, to know what projects are are deemed to be eligible to include for that public hearing. Well, I, I think we'll I think we can get an answer back before. I, my, I, I'm going to stay on top of that. I should have an answer back for some of the project ideas by the January 15th meeting. I will do. You know, I, I, I will commit to doing everything in my power to doing that. And and if not, you know, we can always meet. You know later again late in january to, to hopefully you know bring a project forward for the February second yeah my thoughts is the public hearing is the time to collect the information you know for people that you know we used to have what five six seven organizations come and to the public hearings for that and give their presentations so and then we didn't decide that now I have, to, I have to say that in the form of a motion with Attorney Jopper recommended to cover all but we can still go either way based on how the information comes in. And I like what he said about we it just doesn't get enough, get enough time if there's if there's a need to have it out published two weeks prior to. Because the fifteenth right. is two weeks prior to. I make a motion that we reschedule the CGB fund public hearing for the February 2nd meeting at 7.30. Support. Motion by, is that, that was your full motion, Clerk Keith? Okay. Motion by Clerk Keith, supported by Trustee Turchi. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Employee health care coverage. Letter H.
distribution. Thanks, Jody, for putting this together. It lays it, lays it out in black and white. Um, my personal thoughts is myself and the township can't afford the Blue Cross Blue Shield renewal. The Blue Cross Blue Shield HSA does not save that much. Um, I'm favoring the HAP Silver HSA. It saves the township the most. Uh, it's a flexible plan. Um, I just thought out of the three, that was the best one. Everybody else feels. I like the HAP Silver too. It also has the HSA. So the, those that are participating in it can put money into it if they want to. Um, and the, the savings is, compared to the other two, quite substantial. Uh, I, I feel the same way. Looking at the, the HAP Silver HSA, um, and the bottom line, it saves, just so everyone out in the audience, it saves the township almost $30,000. Um, but it also saves the employees themselves out of pocket what they're paying now for the, um, their insurance. And some of them, it saves them quite a bit. Um, and looking at that and what they have now, um, the bottom line was even the maximum out of pocket per family and per single was less on the HAP HSA than it was on, on the renewal. So, so I like the HAP Silver HSA. Need a motion, please. I'll make a motion to go with the HAP Silver HSA plan. Support. Motion by Trustee Boyd, supported by Trustee Turchi. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Now, Jody, I remember him saying something about we have to get notice to the employees in a certain amount of time. Um, yeah, if you do not, if you'd like to speak to that, please. <coughs> get that done. Thank you. I don't do that part, Chris. Uh, Jeanette, how many days was that? Um, I know for Michael needs 45 days to let the insurance yeah. know, but the employees, I think it's sooner, it's, it's longer, so I, I will get everything to them by the end of the week. Yeah, I do remember him specifically saying 45. Yeah, Jody did um, an email to everyone, all the employees, um, with what their payments will be for whichever, and I will let them know. Yeah, and just, and that was a guesstimate because I didn't have the guardian and the dental, you know, I didn't have everything, but right. it, it did take into account the, the medical itself. Sorry. So I will let everybody know by the end of the week. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Ameriscan Imaging Services. We had Mr. Koval come in and look at all of the old records that came from the old building and in the process of talking to him he also told us about minutes on demand um, and showed us Chris actually kind of came in when um, he was showing it to us all I want tonight is for everyone to take these different websites go out and look at the Amer scan look at the paperwork um, that he gave what he's proposing, and this is for all minutes, back to what was it, 1976? 63, I thought I read somewhere. It was everything that we already have scanned and stuff, so it was quite a bit. Um, 1963. Oh, he has it in here. This is just for informational purposes only? Can no, I this would be going on the website, so anybody can go on. It's, it's public record and it, all this stuff houses on theirs, and it's all searchable. They make it searchable. So you could look up any of the minutes. You can just plug in 
I mean, you only right. want to do one of our I, names. But I understand that. Is this, are you asking for approval for not this? Not tonight. Thing? I just want you to, I want next month. That's what I said for informational purposes. Yep. Right now. But I want you to look at it. I want the websites. I want you to go out to the websites because I, I am going to be asking for approval next month. Um, it's a total first year investment of $850 and it, thereafter it's $500. And they do it. They make it searchable, they put it in their format, and we are also getting a quote on the old, old stuff, the archive stuff, the great stuff that nobody, you know, it's it's history. Um, that would be probably a big expense, so we're going to... By the same we're company? The quote, same company. Okay. Is there any other companies that perform the service? You know, we had someone come in... Um, so we have something to compare it to, basically? long time ago and it was like 30 grand so this one is always updated it's always live as opposed to those others that we looked at okay the new plans 34 by 36 plans site plans and construction documents and they scanned plans I'm sure they probably can't. We need to find out a cost on that. Shannon's also working, Shannon Komorowski's working on that. Okay, you're getting quotes on that, so I don't know if you're aware of that, so we, she may, you need, may need to talk to her about that. No, this guy came in and it was, it was just the, the historical stuff is what we started off and then he showed us his other product. Yes, actually they've done this service for their department too. Right, because we've already had some meetings with some people that came in and presented some basic information. I don't know. Is this one of them? You'll have to ask Shannon. Okay. okay. Well, this one's been its end of me, and so I just want everybody to check it out. Okay, thank you. So no action needed at this time. Public comments. Any public comments at this time? No public comments. Number 22, closed session. Township attorney privilege and confidential legal opinion. In motion. Yes, you want to roll call vote. Yep. I make a motion that we go into closed session at 906. Motion by Trustee Turchi, supported by Trustee Boyd. Mr. Supervisor, just to be clear, this is for purposes of discussing two uh, uh, attorney-client privilege communications that are provided to the board. Thank you, Attorney John. Deputy Clerk, roll call, please. Turchi? Aye. Boyd? Aye. Hattenbacher? Aye. Keith? Aye. Trombley? Aye. Motion passes. Closed session. Thank you. 